Something I haven't done in years is a haul video. I don't even know if these are still like cool anymore. I don't think people still do these, but I'm, I'm doing a haul video. I just got back from Walt Disney World and I picked up a couple cool things. And I mean, I just, I wanna show off the cool stuff that I picked up while I was down there. I didn't pick up anything too crazy. Usually I get like a bunch of art prints or I get a bunch of cool statues. I didn't pick up anything too crazy like that, but I did get a couple cool items that I wanna show you. So I think we're gonna start off with some of the Star Wars stuff that I picked up. Now, I don't know why, for whatever reason, I didn't pick up as much Star Wars stuff as I would have liked to. One of the first things I picked up was actually this little crate from Doc Ondars. And inside the crate, you can get one of these six items right here. And it's a mystery box. You don't know which one you're gonna get. I believe that they were 15 bucks, which isn't bad. Cause like the, the crate on its own is cool. It was like a cool little display piece to display with like six inch black series figures and stuff. So I mostly just wanted the crate. However, I wouldn't be upset with any of the options here. I really wanted the cool Kyber crystal one or like one of like the Jedi statues, but I got this which is like a dark side acolyte mask. Still a pretty cool display piece to add to my Galaxy's Edge collection. The next Star Wars thing I got was this little wind up droid from the infamous Galactic Star Cruiser, AKA the Star Wars Hotel. This is SK620. He was like the droid that like roamed around in the lobby of the hotel. And he's a little wind up guy that kind of moves on his own. You know, you wind him up and he goes along on his own. He also makes noises. So that's cool, makes little like R2-D2 style noises and his head moves and stuff. Pretty cool, I thought he was like in scale with like the Black Series, again, six inch Star Wars figures. I, I love collecting them, super obsessed. But uh, I, I thought he would be in scale with those. He's a little bit bigger than uh, an R2 unit would be in scale with those figures. However, he looks really cool in my like Disney Park Star Wars collection. So I definitely want to add him. And I needed to pick up something uh, from the infamous Galactic Star Cruiser. Also from Galaxy's Edge, I picked up this Marshall badge. I used this for my Batu Bound. We went to the, uh, what was it? The After Hours event. I don't know what the proper name for it is. Some kind of After Hours event at Hollywood Studios. We all dressed up in our uh, best Star Wars Batu Bound. Um, we met up with Adam the Woo and we all hung out at Galaxy's Edge. We all flew the Falcon together. And I decided that I wanted to go undercover as a, a Marshal of the New Republic. So I had my little Marshal badge on my jacket. And something I noticed that Disney was doing this time around that I didn't really notice before is that they were putting a lot of sale items in the parks. Usually the stuff just like goes to the outlets and then like I always miss out on it because I never get to get down to the outlets while I'm down there. But they actually had some cool sale items in the parks. One of those was this Star Wars coaster set. I'm trying to pick all these up without dropping them and smashing them. But it was this Star Wars, like from Star Wars 1977 coaster set. And uh, you get four coasters and they were on sale. I think it was like 30% off and you could use, it might've been, it was 30 or half, I don't remember. But you could also use your DVC discount on it. So it was just like discounts on discounts. It was really cheap. So I decided to pick these up because you know, you get the Cantina band, just some local Cantina hooligans, Han and Greedo. Han shot first, Greedo never fired, and then Ben Kenobi, Chewbacca, and Luke. So it's like all classic cantina scenes. I love the cantina scenes in Star Wars, but any bar scene, any like weird alien creatures, I, I just, I love that aspect of Star Wars. And speaking of Star Wars creatures, I did pick up this one print of the Max Rebo band. I picked this up in the Star Tours gift shop. I'm sure you all know these guys from Return of the Jedi. Again, just one of my favorite scenes, and I, I thought this was like a cool like tour poster. The frame I got, I got on Amazon. This didn't come with it. I just, I bought it on Amazon because I thought it matched the, the mat. And I think that offers a perfect segue into pins. I did pick up a Jabba's Palace Max, look, I'm doing the, the cool hand thing that everybody does. A Jabba's Palace Max Rebo Band pin right here. And I think this was the only Star Wars pin that I got. I did trade a few pins along the way, but this is like the only Star Wars pin that I purchased. Sticking with the Hollywood Studios theme, I got this Slinky Dog pin right here. And it was actually my first time ever going on Slinky Dog this trip around. When we were at that After Hours event, we were with Adam the Woo, and he really, really wanted to go on Slinky Dog. So I had never been on, I'm like, all right, dude, let's do it. It finally opened up towards the end of that. I'm like, we gotta go. First time on Slinky Dog with Trash and Adam the Woo, so I had to get a a pin to commemorate that that time. Every time I try something new at, at Disney World or you know or Disneyland wherever, I go on something new. If it just opened or whatever, I try to get a new pin so I remember it during that trip. And this was actually my first time seeing Hatbox Ghost in Walt Disney World. I've seen him at Disneyland before, um, but this was the first time seeing him at Walt Disney World. So I got a Hatbox Ghost pin. I like the uh, I like the neon kind of look to him. And at Epcot, I got to experience the journey of water. So I got this Moana pin because all the Disney 100 merchandise was on sale. So this was the only, like, I didn't really like need a Moana pin in my collection, but I'm like, I gotta commemorate seeing the, experiencing the journey of water. So I had to get a Milana pin to, to commemorate that. And I figured just get the cheapest one there was out there. Even though it's not Halloween, we were kind of there close to Christmas. I did get a headless horseman pin because you never really see headless horseman merchandise. So I really, I love, I love uh, Ichabod and Mr. Toad. I love the Sleepy Hollow story. 
So I really wanted this headless horseman pin, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad I picked this up. You never see this kind of stuff. And then I guess I should have started with this one, but uh, I got a 2024 pin with stitch on it. And there was a couple different options. You could get like Mickey, Stitch, Mini, and I want to say there was one more, but I chose to get Stitch because I had just released the Alien Encounter video. So like Stitch and Alien Encounter were very in my brain when I was down there. So I'm like, I gotta get Stitch to commemorate releasing the Alien Encounter video right before I went to Walt Disney World. It's just all kind of tied together nicely. So I thought this was a good, a good pin to celebrate this trip around. Speaking of celebrating, Walt Disney World's Pirates of the Caribbean was celebrating its 50th anniversary. I don't know if many people know this, but Pirates of the Caribbean opened a few years later after Walt Disney World opened. It was not an opening day attraction. Despite many popular beliefs, it was not an opening day attraction. So last year would have been the 50th anniversary of Pirates. So this is a pin from last year, but I got it this year, whatever. There it is, cool pirate pin. I don't know why it rocks back and forth. But it does. One thing I've been trying to do lately is get a pin from every resort that I stay at during that specific trip because they do kind of like spice up the designs every now and again. So this time around I stayed at Saratoga Springs. So I got the Saratoga Springs Resort pin. And of course, there's going to be an infamous BL room tour video coming out very soon. It might even be out by now. I'm not I'm not sure the order of how I'm going to release things, but uh of course, I'm gonna have to do a infamous room tour. I also try to get event pins whenever I'm there for like a special event. So I got the 2024 Festival of the Arts pin. I showed this off in the vlog from Festival of the Arts. That was an like insane, overwhelming day. And there was actually so much artwork that I had wanted at the event. And I, at the end of the day, I circled back around to one of the Star Wars themed kind of booths to go pick up some artwork and it was gone by the end of the day. So what I just, after that, I was so fixated on these two pieces of artwork. One had clone troopers on it, and then one had Boba Fett. I think I showed off the Boba Fett one in the video. But after that, I was so fixated on these two pieces of art that I, I ordered them when I got home. So those are on the way. I'm not, I'm not gonna count those in this video because I don't have them yet, and I didn't buy them at Walt Disney World. But I did buy them after because I just nonstop have been thinking about getting those two prints because they were in, they were just, they were sick. I needed to have both of those. There was so much artwork at the Festival of the Arts that I really wanted. If you haven't seen my vlog from that, go check it out, it's somewhere on the channel. But next up, pin-wise, I did get two Kingdom Hearts pins. If you don't know, that there's only like one video game in the whole world that I enjoy playing, and it's Kingdom Hearts, Disney-themed game. It's really weird if you, like, if you don't know what it is and you've never seen or played it before, it's, it's a really weird concept and it looks probably really weird from the outside. It's very like nerd kind of thing. But again, something you never really see merchandise for. So I had to get this one with Sora, Donald and Goofy, the gang right there. And then I got one with King Mickey on it. And I think like they just released more. So I guess Kingdom Hearts pins are a, uh, are a popular thing, which is good. You know, more Kingdom Hearts merchandise, the better. I'll take it. And then perfect segue into video games, the world of Tron. I experienced Tron life cycle run for the first time. Dude, it was amazing. Definitely, I, I was gonna say 10 out of 10 recommend, but I don't know if 10 out of 10 would be the score I would give Tron because the ride is like that, it's done, it's over, it's so fast. So I had to pick up some merchandise to commemorate that, of course, so I got this Tron light cycle run pin, a Flynn's Arcade pin, just because I love the Flynn's Arcade scene in the original Tron movie, as well as in Tron Legacy. And then Tresh and I split a Tron mystery pin box. Those are all the options that you can get. I think Tresh ended up with that one with the little bit on it. And then I ended up with this cool OG light cycle that says end of line. Now I definitely have some more Tron merchandise coming up. We're gonna save that for the end right now. We're gonna go and check out some of the Guardians merchandise I got. I don't know if you can see behind me, but I got a little like Guardians Epcot collection going on over there so I decided to add some more stuff to that display and these are like little like bounty pucks do they have like a name they're just Nova Core data files and uh, I got one with I don't think you can see that but that's Ronan the accuser from the first Guardians movie and then these are these are just like little bad guy like chips I don't know the point of them they just look cool in the display so I, I decided that I needed them and then this one has Loki on it Loki is definitely one of my favorite characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And going along with that Rebel badge that I got, I had to get this uh, Honorary Guardian of the Galaxy badge, just because again, this just looks cool in that shelf with the Infinity Stones and all like my other like Guardians type merchandise in there that I picked up at the gift shop. And only piece of clothing that I got was from the Disney 100 thing because all of the Disney 100 merchandise was half off. So I picked up this Oswald the Lucky Rabbit t-shirt. It's got Oswald's face and then his behind on the backside so I figured why not pick up a cool Oswald shirt for half off because you don't see Oswald merchandise that often either. And uh, Oswald is cool and also black t-shirts are cool and you never see those that often at the Disney parks either. And then everybody I was with had those cool fancy new magic bands that light up. So I felt really left out. So I decided to get my own magic band plus. This is the like villains edition. So it's got Jafar, 
and Hades on the top, and then this part like lights up if you don't know how the new magic bands work. You gotta like charge these things. I'm like, this is getting advanced. Remember when they used to just send these to you for free if you booked a Walt Disney World vacation? Yeah, no, you got you gotta you gotta pay for them now. And now they light up, of course. And then as I was mentioning earlier, I'm 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 kind of a nerd for like Star Wars things. I also love Indiana Jones, and I, I collect action figures. I know really dorky. And I picked up this Indiana Jones Adventure Series figure. I'm trying to get every single like figure in the Indiana Jones Adventure Series. And this one is a Disney Parks exclusive. It comes with his whip, his gun, his, his little satchel, and uh, he's a really cool like movable figure. But for the final batch of merchandise, it is all Tron related, starting off with this, an OG looking Tron identity disc from the old, like original Tron from the 80s. I have one of the original like helmets, like so not from the movie, but it's the same helmet that they used to make the helmets from the movies. It's actually made from like a like little kid's hockey helmet. So I thought this would look cool displayed next to that original hockey helmet. Next up, I got this little thing. Now, what is this? Just like the like chip that Sam Flynn has around his like neck. I think it's like Korra's like identity chip in the movie. But this actually plugs into like the Tron discs you can buy at the park, which is like a Bluetooth speaker. It's really expensive for like the Tron disc from like Tron Legacy. It's like 70 bucks for like this light up speaker thing. It's, I don't think it's worth $70. I don't think it should be $70. It's a little bit expensive. And this chip is also cool because you can use it with the custom Tron action figures that you can purchase from the Tron gift shop, which of course I had to buy. Now this is a cool experience you can do at Magic Kingdom. You really can't see it, but dude, that's my face inside this Tron figure. Now you can pick your helmet, your body style, the color of your program, your face is in here, but also this is this is the real kicker right here. Initiate cycle run. Dude, that's my voice inside the Tron figure. I don't know how well you can hear it on camera, but that... Dude, that's my voice and the face moves. Let me see if I can... The face moves so that it looks like I'm talking. This is lit like, so back when Tron Legacy came out, they had figures of like Sam and Clue and they talked like this and it was, it was the characters from the movie, the actors from the movie. Now I can hang out with those original Tron figures. This is just, this is mind blowing that this exists. I'm clearly a big fan of, of Tron, the original and, and Legacy. I, I had to do this. I was a little bit iffy about it when I got there. Like, then once I got into the, the Tomorrowland gift shop, I'm like, dude, I gotta get my own program. I think it's called like the Tron Identity Program. It's, it's a really cool like process too. You get this little key card, you scan it, you go into this little booth, you get scanned into the grid, you get to choose how your character looks, they scan your face in three different poses to make it look like you're talking, and then you get to choose, I think it's six voice lines in this guy, but it was such a cool experience, it was, it was very similar to like, the lightsaber building kind of thing, and these, he moves too, like he's like, got like lots of articulation to him, like this guy really... This is a good figure. But what really sold me on on this guy, if I can get him to stand, as I'm saying he's a good figure, he's falling over on me. What really sold me on this guy was that this is the package that he comes in. It looks like a Tron arcade cabinet. This, I'm like, I, once the girl showed me this, the girl like working at the thing, I'm like, dude, I'm in, I'm in, I'm sold. I mean, I have this in, in full size downstairs, but like, this just looks so cool next to it, with this guy next to it, and all the other Tron merchandise that I picked up. This is real, like, you can't do anything with this. I mean, you could probably put like a little TV screen in there if you wanted to. But this is such a cool and unique piece of merchandise. If you're a Tron fan or just had a really good time on the ride or whatever, 10 out of 10 would recommend this. I would recommend this more than the ride because it's just such a cool experience. And you are literally an action figure. That That's just, what a cool piece of merchandise. That is such a unique and cool piece of merchandise. So yeah, I'd say that this is my favorite thing that I got during my trip at Walt Disney World. I should have done like a whole video about like this experience. I did get a couple clips here and there, so maybe I'll find some way to finagle it into a full length video. But that's pretty much it for all the merchandise I picked up while I was at Walt Disney World. They didn't really have anything like mind blowing. I'd say like the best stuff was at the Festival of the Arts because it's all like artist made like stuff by fans. So I think that's gonna do it for my little Disney Parks haul video. I got a couple more edited Walt Disney World videos, things that we shot while we were down there. I'm also working on a new History Secrets and Remnants video. That's that. Those take a while to do, so I'm gonna take my time with that. In the meantime though, Disney vlogs coming out and then probably some more like vintage home video footage. I'll, I'll release that in the meantime while I'm working on the next project. This has been my Walt Disney World 2024 haul video. Thanks for watching.